welcome to the number one Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Daddy McDoo. As always, I'm joined by the great John Sheeran. And for the first time in quite some time, we have our third co-host, Dr. Hoji the Electric Smoji. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, me. Yeah. Welcome, welcome back, back to my own show. Yeah. It's right. great to be back. Well, it, that is the question. Is it is still your show? Are you? Yes, your name is on on the logo. It's on all the stuff, all the you know t-shirts and sandals and all that. But the number one part. The number one, right? But John, you know that this show is losing funds, and we have lost on Patreon. We have lost. I don't know how to say. This, a whopping. But we've lost like I don't know the numbers, but it's like half of our money. If, yeah. if Courtney, could you pull up that graphic for me? Yeah, pull it, pull it so, up a lot. Yeah. So we used to be getting about forty-five dollars from our, our patrons, as they call them. But look at this. Hoji took his break. Yeah. June, beginning of June. Look at that. We've lost three patrons in that short amount of time. Wow. Yeah. And 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 going, I have to bro. I have to fire one of you now. Well. And I hope it's me. Yeah. So the the thing is I don't even think he has a real excuse for not being on the show, John. Well, I could take Hold on a second. Yeah. Aren't you the accountant here? Like aren't you the one who's supposed to be finding the money, not complaining about where it's going? Well, John, you are a cash cow is what we call them. You kind yeah. of yeah. We made you, you. Yeah, but but when when Hoji is not on the show, it is just it's really bad for marketing purposes. Yeah, here's the groove. I've, 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 many many a person has complained about the loss of groove when I've left. Yeah, right. So so you have no you have no real reason. No, I, for I, I do yeah. I do. Let let me tell you where I've been and, and what's been going on this past two months. So I undertook a project and uh, the idea was uh, biodegradable uh, seat covers. And we were going to use, speaking of cash cow, uh, cow dung. And it was the one, I went back to Village Island where the cow dung is uh, really uh, just available wherever you want. In fact, even places where you don't want. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, what was it called? It was, um, it was uh, uh, teat, teat others, seat covers, teat mother seat covers, something like that. I can't remember. It was a, a clever thing uh, that I was working on for a long time. Uh, I made the mistake of putting these seat covers on my own Tesla and it just, you know, the, the temperature got hot as it does on Village Island and, and it ruined my Tesla. I mean, it was amazing. These, these seat covers that were made out of biodegradable cow dung began to degrade uh, in the hot, uh, humid uh, weather of uh, Village Island ruined the tesla just absolutely yeah. ruined it as you can see here we tried to put it back together with the tape and the duct tape we get the seat covers back going and uh you can you can flip over to the next one it's uh it was really sad the the, the cow dung just began to melt all over my tesla i had to bring the, a lot of people back in village island to get to start cleaning up my car and honestly that's what i've been doing for the last two months the project is not done we're going to make biodegradable uh, seat covers out of cow dung but we're not there yet. The technology just isn't there yet, Dario. Yeah, yeah. That that's a great excuse. If that was actually a test of you obviously just found it on the internet. But look, I want to I want to move on about something more positive, and that is that we have some incredible guests today. I'm talking about Sky and Bobby of the Candlestick Fantasy oh, yeah. Sunset, you know, uh, beach island giveaway. Beach podcast, party. a very yeah. romantic podcast, from what I understand, that, uh, you know, I imagine they have the, the Fabio flowing golden locks. Yeah. John, I, I really don't know what the podcast is about, but here's the thing. It's about fantasy. It is about fantasy. Yeah. And, and believe in fantasy. Yeah. So you, you, should, you should take that leap of faith and believe in fantastical things that do not exist the same way, like our podcast is called The Believe in Bengals, which is equally as difficult. And, and that, is, that is my understanding of 
of what this show is about. So let us bring on our guests, Bobby and Sky. Welcome, guys. How are we How's doing? Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for coming. So, so, so yeah, so, so please tell us about your, your, what you do and, and, and what is this, uh, yeah, what is this fantasy that uh, football? Our, our fantasy is football. Bobby and I spend too much of our day fantasizing about fake opportunities with real people going into fantasy football. And fantasy football, for anybody that's unfamiliar, the definition is a game in which participants serve as owners and general managers for the virtual professional American Football League teams. Basically, it's an opportunity for Bobby and I to live out our childhood dreams of playing on football teams. But since we don't actually play on football teams or manage them, now we get to manage manage other people and have control over what they do. They score points out of their uh, work ethic on the field, and we get points against each other and our friends, and we put it together and hopefully bring home some Ws. And when we get that championship, we celebrate on those luscious sunset beaches, as you were mentioning. Wow. So I just learned I've been playing fantasy football on this show. I've been controlling them and, yeah, and uh, monetizing Everything. Yeah. No. Okay. No, 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 no. So no. fantasy football what can you, be anything. What you're talking about no. is, that's that's exploitation and manipulation. Oh, yeah. Right. It's close. I mean, it is a lot like fantasy football, except you're you're hurting real people. He has sleep. been doing that. Yeah. Like. Yeah. 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 So none so of you, us can get paid. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantasy. It is. It is a fantasy, especially when we're losing so much money from people yeah. just disappearing. Yeah. So Bobby and this guy, you you are a team. Do you ever just one of you just disappear for two and a half months <laughs> to save the environment, to save humanity? Climate change ruined my seat covers. It got it's, hot. I will say to save for what you did, I can understand. Save some, save the world. Yeah. I think you did the right thing. I have not had that excuse yet, so I have not left Sky's side. I've been pretty consistent over the last year, so. Uh, we don't really take too much time apart, but we do have a lot of guests on. So this is actually a fun opportunity for us to actually join another podcast. So we're looking forward to it. Okay, okay. Let, let me ask yeah. a question. Let me ask a question. I just want to come out the gate with a fantasy football question because I tried playing fantasy football uh, a few times and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> what would you suggest is a good, uh, shall we say, strategy for picking the sleeper, I guess it would be called, unexpected fantasy pick. What do well, you I think the, the best way to find a quote unquote sleeper is somebody that's going late in your drafts that is going to outpace their value. So each player in a draft has a certain value in which the public deems them at and drafts them onto their team. The idea is to get somebody late in your draft that is going to seriously outpace that draft capital. So hopefully, you know, years ago for the saints in 2017, Alvin Kamara, was somebody who was drafted very late, but as a rookie even, he outpaced Mark Ingram and Adrian Peterson on his own team. He ended up finishing very high as a rookie. Justin Jefferson for the Vikings last year did the same thing. So you're looking for somebody, and usually the 10th round or later, that's going to finish, hopefully, you know, in the top 24 or so in their position. That would be a great sleeper opportunity. Wow. And, and yeah. do you know where everybody is right now? Like, where's Joe Burrow? I will find Joe Burrow... He's probably like top hundred. I mean, he's a, you know, I'm just wondering if he's a sleeper. He he no, he works very hard. Joe Burrow. I mean, not, he's not hard. literally sleeping. See, no, he's not just sleeping. I mean, like if he's an unexpected, a, a dark horse. I believe. Okay, let, let guys, can we explain this to Oji? No, this no, is not real. Do. These are fantasy. You see, but video the fantasy is connected to reality. So it's about how they expect guys, the person to perform. I don't think he gets it. So Joe Burrow in the computer game does never has to sleep but never sleeps never no. sleeps so no, this is not look let us let us uh yeah joe burrow obviously he had a, a bad week if you will last week and then john he's been he's been lighting it up the past few days not like it means anything obviously but he you know he, he had some little uh, things to work out to kind of getting the rust off right and and it seems like uh he could be a, a steal. Isn't that the whole point? Like Joe Burrow coming back from an injury was going to be, you know, reacclimating himself into the quarterback that he was last year and I guess in 2019. But if everything goes right, if he's alive back there and if he knows what he's doing, he has three receivers that could all easily eclipse a thousand yards. I think 
from my understanding of fantasy football, like quarterbacks don't go as high as some of the top wide receivers or running backs. I guess there's a question of value there that we can kind of ask here. But I think with in terms of what Burrow is, like there is might there might be some hesitation as to how good he can be coming off of that injury. But if everything goes right, like you're talking about potentially one of the more productive and efficient quarterbacks, maybe in the entire league with the amount of potential in terms of the receiving talent on that offense. I, I think if we're talking about sleepers in the, the quarterback position, I think Burrow has to be up there in terms of one of the, the highlighting candidates, is he not? Yeah. Well, you know who else is a, a high candidate for a sleepers? Hoji. Yeah. He's always just on vacation. But look, yeah, you well, mentioned John. going to keep coming, isn't it? Yeah. You mentioned, John, you mentioned the receivers. And I really think, I think that it's not clear at all. Like, you look at T. Higgins, and he's ready to have a breakout season. He's, you know, he, he's, he's making these incredible grabs. He's got some really fancy moves now. Jamar Chase was expected to be the lead guy, but he's still a rookie, you know? So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I would maybe lean Higgins, at least early and, in the season. And yet all of this, in all of this year and all of their well-being is all riding on the knee of Joe Burrow. I watched the press conference and uh, Joe seems very confident. He seems very reasonable and rational, but uh, rational, but very disappointed, Dadio, in, in in what's to come. I'm watching the press conference about healing and about this knee, and there and there's no mention of chakras. There's no mention of acupuncture. No mention of heat therapy. There's no mention yeah. of alternate well, alternative spiritual healing yeah. or gluten free diet. I mean, right. this man. I am concerned about this coming year. Yeah. If Riding on the, on the Joe Burrow knee. Yeah, well, we have, we have two guests who are actually fantasy experts, Sky and Bobby. So, guys, I know that you have kind of worked through the whole receiver thing and where you rank them. And, uh, and I, I think both of you would say that Tyler Boyd is a little, being a little underrated. Isn't that fair to say? I mean... Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, set the, I'll set the table here for Bobby. I'm going to let Bobby take this one for the most part, but I'll give some basics here for, for the listeners. Jamar Chase right now is a rookie going as wide receiver 23 in the middle of the fifth round. T. Higgins, who's one of my favorite receivers in general, young receivers in the NFL, great season last year, going as wide receiver 24 right behind Jamar Chase. And Tyler Boyd going a little bit further a couple rounds later at wide receiver 36. I'm going to defer to Bobby on this one, though, and we will talk about the wide receivers for the Bengals. Similar to your show, the Bengals wide receivers are better than threes. I get that feeling that the Bengals three receivers are going to be great together, and you guys are great together as a Thank trio. You. Thank Last you. year, so when you look at it, Tyler Boyd's my favorite of all these guys. He's actually being drafted two rounds after Higgins and Chase. The craziest part is it doesn't make any sense. Look at the 2020 production. Last year with Joe Burrow, T. Higgins had 70 targets in the games with Burrow. Boyd had 81. Boyd averaged 13.6 points per game. Higgins averaged 12.1. And now, for some reason, Boyd is going two-plus rounds later. I personally think that Joe Burrow has proven time and time again that he is an elite slot receiver thrower. Look what he did with Justin Jefferson at college at LSU. And then last year, once again, we saw it with Cincinnati Bengals and Tyler Boyd. But the offense themselves, your Zach Taylor is your offensive coordinator. He's had the experience in the past really dominating with slot receivers. For example, Jarvis Landry in 2015, his lone season with Zach Taylor when he took over with kneecap bite and Dan Campbell back in Miami, uh, Jarvis Landry had 166 targets that season. So there is a lot of optimism. Tyler Boyd might be my favorite Bengals wide receiver in general, but now when you can get him two and a half, three rounds later, it's a slam dunk pick. I love your boy, Tyler Boyd. Great. 166 targets. That's a lot. That's more than Hoji gets. Because, you know, I mean, he's he's had a lot of broken relationships over the years. Yeah. But yeah, Hoji, if he... Yeah, Cupid has missed many a target. Yeah. yeah. But look, guys, okay, I want to move on. We're out of time for that. And I want to talk about running backs. Yes. Now, Joe Mixon, obviously, is the number one running back. Got a big Mixon. contract. He's, he's healthy. But John and I really like Samaj Pirine. Why? And, and Well, I'll tell you why. It's because he runs hard. Hmm. But the thing is, the thing is, he was a free agent last year. So the question that I have for you two is, does he run hard or did he run hard for the money? He run hard for it, honey. He, did he run hard for the money? And the Bengal said, we have wait, to wait. do it. Did you yeah. say he run, he ran, did he run hard for the money or did he run hard for the honey? I mean, what is he, a bear? No, 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 Ooh. no. He, yeah, did, and the Bengals 
had to had to do him had to pay him rights. So okay, okay. That's the question: is was it a one-time thing, right, or is that who he is? And and I tend to say that no. I mean, he yeah, maybe it won't hold up for a whole season. His running style, but but yeah, I mean, he's going to get. I think he's going to get a hundred carries, right, John? A hundred? He'll get a hundred in the first month, probably. Like wow. he's going to get the ball. The thing is with me. Joe Mixon has probably been drafted in the first two to three rounds for the past however many years he's been in the league for now. And I think the meme or just the perception is that it's never worth it. Either he gets injured or his offensive line is crap and he just can't produce behind it. So at this point, my question for Sky and Bobby is like, at this point with Mixon, do you just wait and see how far Mixon falls in your draft? Because you don't want to be the guy that makes the mistake again for like the third straight year to overdraft mix and have him underproduce, right? Uh, no, I completely disagree. I'm all yes. about Joe Mixon. Yes. Uh, weeks three to five last year, you saw 70% of the snap share. Samaje P. Ryan ran hard for the money, and the Bengals got duped. I'm going to throw that out there right now. Puka Williams and Chris Evans, possibly two rookies that got drafted, have a better chance uh, than Samaje P. Ryan to make it happen on the field. I don't dislike Samaje P. Ryan so much. I just think his running style is more of a change of pace back, whereas if Joe Mixon goes down, Samaji Piran would step up. The other two guys have an opportunity to be maybe used in the pass game or so, but Mixon should get a bulk of the workload. 27 opportunities over those uh, three games last year before he got injured, of course, the huge game, three touchdowns versus Jacksonville. Uh, Joe Mixon's my man, absolutely. He was on pace for 60 targets last year. That's a career high. He's going to have a better offense, a better touchdown potential in general. Gio Bernard, who I like a lot, is now in Tampa Bay with old man Brady. Uh, Joe Mixon's the man, and yes, he's risky, but so is Jonathan Taylor, so is Saquon Barkley, uh, so is DeAndre Swift. I will absolutely take Joe Mixon over all those guys. Right yes, now. excuse me while I kiss the sky. Listen, Get that it. is what I've been. That is the the take I've been waiting to hear. Listen, this is Joe, Joe, Joe Mixon. What's changed is, is Frank Pollock's back, okay? And Frank yes. Pollock and Joe Mixon, they got that relationship. Mixon tweeted about him. Mixon is, is, is Pollock's back, and, uh, and Pollock is, uh, is, is Mixon's, uh, you know, guy. So, yes, yes, expect this is the year of Mixon, especially with a, 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 a not-so-healthy uh, Joe Burrow. This is the year of Mixon. You're going to be leaning on the Mixon. They're going to be Mixon in the Mixon, okay? Okay, so look, we're out of time so, uh, of, on that topic. So we're going to move on. And, and Bobby, I want to know about Joe Burrow. Look, let's assume he stays healthy, okay? With that offensive line that we're talking about, inconsistent. He's going to have to get the ball out quickly. And c- can we have that kind of record-breaking, well, now we have 17 games, but, you know, let's say close to 5,000 yards, you know, 40 touchdowns. Can he do that? With that offensive line, I don't think so. Not with the offensive line. Uh, the line is, is Jackson Carmen was your second round pick, and he's not even playing with the first team yet. Riley Reef is a nice, steady veteran, but overall, you haven't done enough. I think Frank Pollock is a great, great, great sign. Uh, getting him back is key, though. I think it's going to help. But listen, Joe Burrow last year was just inside the top twenty in points per game for fantasy purposes, and they were throwing a ton. So he was not even producing high level. I know A.J. Green was kind of not producing with the targets he was getting. You're now replacing A.J. Green with Jamar Chase. But you're asking Burrow, coming off a serious knee injury, to make significant leaps. Just to get into the top 10 in points per game last year, he would have to improve by six points per game. That's a lot to ask for this guy, especially coming off a knee injury. But I think Joe Burrow right now today, great point you brought up earlier with quarterbacks, is he's the 13th quarterback off the board, but he's going outside the top 100 overall. So like we touched on, fantasy quarterbacks fade. So in that range, you might be okay to take Joe Burrow, pair him with somebody else early on in the season. I do expect Joe Burrow, once that knee starts getting a little bit healthier, he gets reacclimated. I think the second half is going to be huge, especially once Jamar Chase improves in his rookie season. I I think for me, and uh, John, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, but the key indicator of what the Bengals have planned offensively is keeping uh, Michael uh, Jordan involved, despite uh, the negative feelings everybody has maybe toward him for what happened last year. And I think what it indicates, knowing his run blocking and whatnot, is that this is the year of Joe Mixon. John, am I wrong? Potentially not. 
But I, I think Bobby brought up a good point. It. The Bengals offensive line has improved, as you were saying, with Jackson Carmen on the bench. You get that that even tells you that the guys that they have right now are much better than what they're even saying. So yeah, Joe Burrow produced at a certain level last year, but he has a better offensive line now and he has three receivers. I think I agree with Bobby. He's definitely gonna produce in the top ten quarterbacks for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I love when you have first and second round offensive linemen on the bench. You know, we had the way exactly. we had we had Jake Fisher, and and it just gives you that depth that you need. It, it shows that you have that firepower up front. That the the you know you have the horses, as they yeah. say. No. So, l- look, let us move on to big steals. Now, I wish it was big deals because a stealing is wrong, but getting a great deal, well, that is what this whole country is about, isn't it, guys? Look, who who for our listeners who live in a fantasy world where there are fantastical people playing football. You have no idea what's And we're not talking about, you know, centaurs or, or mermaids or we're not talking about those guys, right? I mean, because you were mentioning just kind of uh, imaginary versions of, of real people. It's like souped up people. It's, but yeah, so, so who, who are the best dealers? Who are people not, other than Bengals players, let's say? Who are, who are, who's going to low? In the uh, draft, he's looking for a bargain. He's reaching. Auction, yeah. This is a man. This is a man. I, I got to tell our guests. This is a man who goes to the dollar store and finds the clearance section. Okay, so this is a man who's looking for the deal. He said, "Guy and Bobby, did I ever tell you the story? So I go to a dollar store. Okay, and I wanted to get this cologne, very nice cologne, obviously, and." Obviously. It, it was it was the it was the the, the box was a little bit torn, so I, I wasn't sure if it had been used. And so I told them, I was like, can I get a discount? They're like, you're at the dollar store. And I said, what's your point? And so they gave it to me for, get this, 96 cents. Now, I know it says, oh, four, four cents, what's the big deal? That adds up when everything you buy is from the dollar store and you, and you get that from them every time. That so, four cents was my Christmas bonus. Yeah. Obviously, it was a big waste of money. Obviously, it didn't Yeah, it was supposed to be out. split between the two of us. I, I was yeah. lost on two cents. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, the real Christmas bonus that Daddy sends his employees is an electronic card, not even a physical card. And then you click on a button and it says Daddy loves you. It's true. I do. Look, Bobby and Sky, G- give us give us those. those, those yeah, that the bargain. Those What's the yeah, bargain, the bargain. Bin deal? Come on. In, fantasy in, bargain. Give us in, the deals. In four seconds. Go. Go. Three, I've got four. I got two for you really quickly. I'll spend Eight seconds. How about that? Uh, Chase Claypool, I know not a popular name on your side of the fence, but an excellent player. Wide receiver 29 right now in the back of the sixth round. 100 targets from week five on last year. 14.3 yards per reception. Best on his team. Deontay Johnson's a beast, but I think I would rather have Claypool over Juju and the the, uh, Steelers there. And then Cam Newton, somebody that people are forgetting coming back second year off the surgery and COVID and everything else. 15 of 16 games last year, so he's not an injury risk. 12 rushing touchdowns. The passing touchdowns have to go up. He's getting drafted as QB 32. He could be QB 16 overall or 14 in fantasy points per game. Absolute bargain. F- a brand new repertoire all the way down the field there for Cam Newton. His second year in New England. He is a late round quarterback. Absolutely. Yeah, for me, it's got it's simple. I think Tyler, well, first of all, Tyler Boyd's my favorite. But he told me non Cincinnati guys, so I'll move on from him. It's actually Melvin Gordon. A lot of people are expecting Javante Williams to be the clear number one. It's not the case. Uh, most Denver reporters are saying Melvin Gordon's still the guy. Last year, he was the 12th running back in fantasy. People don't realize that in half-point PPR. He's being drafted as the RB32 in the ninth round now. Um, this The other thing that's key is Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater wins that job. Teddy Bridgewater targets the running back position 8% higher than Drew Locke does. That means that Melvin Gordon will be more involved in the passing game a lot more than last year. So I think that's going to help solidify his role, even if Javante Williams takes over for Phil Lindsay, which we expect him to do. The other one's Antonio Brown. This guy just dusted himself off after not playing for a year and a half, and it was a top 24 wide receiver, and he's now going outside the top 40. So you got to take that seriously. I mean, this guy was a generational talent. I know he had a lot of hiccups along the way, but overall, Antonio Brown walked back into the playing last year and he finished as a top 24 receiver in points per game. So, Yeah, well, okay. So... Final questions for you is what are the bad deals? Like, what would you say? Like, this is maybe the worst deal in the history of deals. You know, like, I don't know if any of you have ever been, have ever traveled, but if you forget to pack enough 
laundry and there's, you know, the, the coin laundry machines are too expensive and you have to buy a shirt that's not in the clearance section. You know, what, what, who, is, who is paying full price for something that is, is really not worth it? Two very risky options right now that hopefully will get better in the next couple of weeks, but we're only two weeks or three weeks out of camp. I'm worried about Jonathan Taylor currently with the Colts getting drafted in the first round. Love the player. Don't like the situation of Wentz and Nelson are out. And Saquon Barkley, same thing. I'm worried about Saquon and his health. So two very high potent draft positions, two players that could potentially let you down significantly in the first round. After that, a couple more running backs that are very popular in fantasy, but I am personally staying away from at their draft costs. DeAndre Swift of the Lions, Miles Sanders. Sanders of the Eagles and Josh Jacobs of the Raiders. All of those have too many question marks, and I would rather have other players in the areas in which they're getting drafted. Yeah, mine's going to be Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne is uh, coming into his rookie year. He's already said he's going to be splitting work with James Robinson, but he's now getting higher and higher in draft costs. He's being drafted as the 20th RB. He's in the top half of the fourth round. Here's some things about Daryl Bevel, the new offensive coordinator for the Jaguars. Last year, they eased DeAndre Swift into his role, and DeAndre Swift was fine for fantasy, but he averaged 11.1 points per game. He was the RB25. I expect ETN to take a similar role. AP took a lot of the early downs. I expect James Robinson to do the same. So I think if you're drafting him at 20, you're probably drafting him at his ceiling, especially early on in 2021. So I'm going to fade Travis Etienne. Plus, he's going ahead of some notable guys, Cooper Cup, Deontay Johnson, DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, and Adam Thielen. So I love those receivers in those rounds. So I'll probably pivot there, and I'm going to fade Travis Etienne. Where, where do you guys have Trey Sermon? Trey Sermon, 49ers. I'm looking up right now for you. Yeah, so I'll just fill it in. I love Trey Sermon. Me too. I mean, he's he's one of those guys where he looks like a every down back in the Shanahan yes. scheme. Shanahan has a history of utilizing rookies as well. He did utilize Alfred Morris way back in the day uh, of his rookie season. He's going to utilize the best backs. We've seen guys come out of nowhere. Raheem Mostert uh, way back then, too. He comes out of nowhere, undrafted guy. He's going to put the best guy out there. And Trey Sermon, I think, is going to step in and get at least a double-digit carries and at some point take over that full-time role. Right now, okay. the actual ranking I have of him is running back 36, which doesn't sound exciting, but that's only because he's not necessarily the starter. If we get to week one or we see him pop off a few runs in spring tra- in a training camp and Mostert takes a, a back seat potentially, I think Sermon eventually is the number one here. And we've seen over years that the 49ers, even though they have a running back by committee, their guys are RB2s at least with RB1 upside weekly. Trey Sermon could be that dog in this offense. So oh, yeah. he could finish top you know, 18, 15 if he stays healthy and gets the work. It's just going to be so cl- crowded. And people are forgetting that Jeff Wilson, although injured early in the season, could be coming back about a month and a half in, which could cloud it up even more. Love the player. Again, not hot on the situation at least to Got start it. the season yeah, yeah. just so yeah. you guys know if you were impressed by that hoji obviously googled who are yeah. the biggest steers in fantasy and uh, you know he put in the work so i'm going to give you back that two cent christmas bonus oh yeah yeah but you know guys look we were so happy that you're on the show we are so happy that you believe in the bengals just like we believe in these, these characters that you talked about, you mentioned Cam Newton, who is also known as Superman. So, you know, it's, it, is, it, it goes both ways. And so I, I'm glad that you support our beliefs and we support your beliefs. And uh, please subscribe to the Believe in the Candlestick, uh, you know, romantic uh, podcast with Bobby and the Sky. I, I hope I got the name right. We have to shorten the name. <laughs> we have yeah, to be yeah. short. It's, it's pretty, we'll work it's on pre- that. It's What's pretty the close. real name? What's the real name, guys? Yeah, we the one we go by usually is the Candlestick Kids Fantasy Football Podcast. Quite a mouthful, but we also go by TCK Pod, and we are new members of the last six weeks to the Believe Podcast Network. Very happy to be on along with you all and all of the other incredible podcasts. You can check us out. Bobby and I are on Twitter at Sky Guasco and Bobby Lamarco. Instagram, Fantasy Football underscore TCK Pod, and Fantasy Football X Factor as well. Make sure you leave a rate and review and catch us on YouTube and our channel as well. Thank you very much for having us. Wow, I wish you could do yeah. that for our show. Daddy always yeah. tries to do that for our show. It'll, and he just it'll, it'll cost you two cents. Well, the guy is literate, so that helps. So you, know? you, mentioned, yeah. you mentioned that there's other Believe podcasts, right? And so how many things are you supposed to believe in? Like, obviously, the best football teams, you're not going to say, like, believe in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they just won the Super Bowl. Maybe you say, like, here are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? That would be the podcast. Or, like, here are the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, how many things do we have to believe in? 
Well, I think what's fun about Believe Podcast Network is you're believing in the network as a whole. So anyone yeah. affiliated with the network, you are in a sense believing in. Right? I mean, look, it's up to look, you they, to they, decide how deeply you believe in everyone else. Right. Okay. I mean, they believed in two crazy guys with a dream. That's me and Daddy are coming from Little Village Island. All we had going for us was this handsome young man you see here, John Sheeran, who knows some stuff. But they believed in us. They supported our show. So I believe in them. Also, yeah. can I can I ask a question before we get out of here? And this is this is a little personal. I hate to take over the show. I don't want to please, be rude. Please, we but, need someone. But, to. but John, if you wouldn't mind, um, and, and please don't you know uh, don't be biased necessarily or feel like you owe me one. But if you're looking at the three solid facial hair situations on the screen right now, okay. Um, which side do you do you lean on, John? Team Hoji. Oh. I, I'm assuming that Sky does not use any crazy vegan type of beard oil, and it still looks amazing like that. So I have to lean with Sky first. Um, okay. But Hoji is a close second. Daddy oh, has, yeah. oh, his yeah. mustache has seen better days, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that okay. mustache. You, you, that said, mustache. you said it, I didn't. I just want, I was just curious what the, you know what the overall vibe was. Look, the one. used car, 1980s car dealer mustache is so out of style and yet daddy insists on keeping it i mean uh, is yeah. it really I'm, i don't you know there is like a billionaire who owns the jacksonville jaguars who has that my is, mustache that is, so that is i don't know that's i don't true. know any billionaires that look like you look that is all we have for this show so i have a billion dreams yeah so for dr hoji the lecter kismoji and john shirin and our very special guests bobby and the sky can i uh, get some outro music as we so yeah so as as we close so don't forget to don't forget to subscribe to the podcast leave a five star review and i'm talking about it and the mistake and, and, and uh, that's all we have we will see you next time so long this week